Sup sup everyone welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, things that you guys probably don't want to talk about now it's not always sunshine and rainbows here on this channel but I think it's time to address this right I think deep down everybody can agree with me I don't think many people would be opposed to what I'm about to say to you guys but I think there is power creep in Genshin Impact and there's power creep but it's introduced in ways that we are not familiar with ah very interesting right how can there be power creep yet the players seem to be all for it even though by traditional standards power creep has killed a lot of gacha games well i mean not just gacha games many types of games have fallen at the hands of severe power creep which ultimately prevented the players from being able to keep up with consistent grinding and updates and eventually you just grow apart from the game it's not the game that you fell in love with from the beginning but when it comes to a game like Genshin Impact somehow Hoyoverse was able to slide a fast one right between your ass cheeks and down it went the power creep so where is it walrus are you saying Nahida is the power creep is Nahida power creep right I have three archons here on screen we got Nahida we got Raiden Shogun and we got Zhongli right so where is the power creep is there a definitive way to say well Nahida is obviously better than Zhongli for people wondering where the hell is venti we don't talk about venti here all right every time i talk about him people say you're i'm being mean or toxic every time i don't talk about him people are like but where's venti where's venti right there's nahida obviously power creeps venti by conventional standards i think yes nahida if you're talking in terms of uh, how useful she is currently for sure i think nahida is more useful than venti but that's not the power creep i'm talking about the power creep i'm talking about is the entirety of the dendro element and their reactions the whole dendro system that has been implemented into the game since the 3.0 patch has completely uprooted the traditional way we used to understand genshin impact and its reaction systems characters that were not so good were raised from the ashes into beautiful phoenixes electro phoenixes we got yaimiko we got kaching all are able to now put the crown upon themselves and actually stand shoulder to shoulder with their peers but a lot of people would say walrus that's not quite true right because some of the best teams still available to us are traditional teams so when you say dendro power creeps the game i think it's kind of inaccurate and you do have a point hence is why i will be spending the rest of this video slowly breaking this down to bite-sized chunks for you guys to fully get the grasp of why i think dendro truly has elevated the bar when it comes to what is considered powerful all right and to continue with this we have to start with nahida because what Nahida offers right now is just this immeasurable value in terms of a character when it comes to the core of Dendro application. With Nahida's elemental skill, you're able to consistently apply Dendro at a frequency that uh, most of her on-field carries can really take advantage of. With the duration of her elemental skill, you really don't have to worry about Dendro application. And the scaling that has been designed into Bloom and Hyper Bloom is just completely off the charts. With elemental mastery spearheading the entirety of this reaction system's damage core, you really don't have to invest very much into any of these uh, characters apart from the on-field characters. So, for example, if you're playing a Kaching Quicken spread team, then you invest in the Kaching, and everybody else on your team can be relatively low invested. You can have them all at Ascension 4 running like barely any artifacts you can even have them running no artifacts in most cases kaching will be the one to carry this team right it works i'm not saying it's amazing if you have minimum investment in all your supports but i'm telling you the strength in dendro reactions makes it so that you are able to still capitalize on the strength of your main carry now, if you think about this from the perspective of, let's say, Vaporize, or maybe Melt, or maybe Electro Charge, it's not as easy to get away with this. Now, why has this become the case? Did Hoyoverse just have a big oopsie moment being like, oh, apologies, we didn't mean to make Dendro so potent for low investment players. Now, then now we have to talk about uh, why there is power creep. Because I don't think many people will argue that Dendro right now is one of the better reactions, especially when it comes to input versus output. How much you put in for how much you get out, right? I don't think anybody prior to the release of 
Nilu were able to clear the abyss 36 stars with like a level one weapon on Nilu with all free all free to play characters. You just played Nilu Super Bloom and relied on the reaction of these characters to completely plow through the abyss 36 stars. Um, and for people who are curious, I'm referring to the CN player who. 36 star the abyss with like level 60 70 characters with nilu super bloom when she first came out so this is really nothing new why is this the case though right like are you guys still going to deny that dendro essentially is a power creep that's why i was saying in the beginning you have to stop believing in power creep in the traditional sense being like oh a new character that completely uproots the standard from previous characters no 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 that is what will kill the game because you hyper focus on a singular character meaning you are funneling your entire player base into that one character and basically you're saying well if you want to continue enjoying the game you have to pull for this character now for dendro's case i'm telling you right now dendro was designed mostly to be a, an experience for newer players to not feel so left behind they don't want newer players coming into the game feeling like they have to play catch up to the main player base that's why dendro was designed with new players in mind now of course they did not forget older players dendro in many ways is a revitalization of the game when it comes to its daily and weekly monthly goals right people now have newer more exciting reactions to look forward to but the players who want to focus more on the old stuff they're all still there and in terms of power level and investment you've already invested quite a lot into them so by comparison and let's say Hu Tao versus Al Haytham. If you've invested a lot into your Hu Tao, she's not necessarily weaker than Al Haytham. However, Al Haytham doesn't take very much to match Hu Tao's power. And this goes back to my point about input versus output. When it comes to Dendro, it has high yield for low input. Now, to some, that may be like, okay, I can see it. That does sound a little bit unfair, right? Like, so does this imply that in the future we will have more? power creep in the form of like character rosters and metas for example there's still an aspect of dendro that is yet to be developed the virgin and burning meta the characters of this caliber characters of this reaction system has not really been fully fleshed out is this going to be yet another power creep in how we play the game right now there hasn't really been a focus on damage over time in Genshin Impact. Most of the damage that we deal is upfront in waves of burst damage. Even if you have like a more extended uh, burst duration like Ito, like Zhao, Sino, you're still dealing chunks and chunks of damage uh, in a relatively short time. Sino being the longest at 18 seconds, but you really can't sustain him to that degree. So now we have to look at something like burning and burning how are they going to incorporate this into the game to make it feel like that it's worthwhile for people to invest in think about it like this for veteran players however still wants your money it's not like uh once you've paid however an x amount of money however is going to be like oh well walrus has already spent five thousand dollars we gotta stop milking this guy we should just let him go free no the goal is always to siphon every last dollar bill from your wallet, from your bank account, from your savings account, from your safe, whatever the hell you got it stored. They want it, right? So creating these new characters, yes, they want to benefit uh, newer players coming in because newer players always want the new shiny stuff. They come in, oh, what's the banner available? Oh, Nahida? I, I guess I'll just pull her then, right? Whatever is currently available, I don't think many new players are coming in being like, oh, I should be waiting for a Zhongli rerun. Okay, I'm just going to play the game with my boring ass free to play characters for the next four, five, six, God knows, eight months until Zhongli comes back or a Hu Tao comes back again. I don't know. It's not realistic. What will most likely happen is people will just roll with what they get. And as the meta develop, they're going to pull for characters that favors their account or favors the meta in the current given patch. So, Holyvers always wants to continuously push forward low-hanging fruits such as the Dendro, Quicken, Spread, Hyper Bloom metas so that for people just coming in right now, they don't need to feel bad about dropping investment right this moment because it's you when you're in your honeymoon phase 
that's when you are most vulnerable, right? You think everything Hoyoverse does is good. You think every day that you can't wait to get home, can't wait to log online, can't wait to maybe summon, and oh damn, I'm just 10 pulls away from maybe getting another 5 star. That's maybe, potentially, some dollar bills for Hoyoverse. I'm just saying right now that we have to understand Hoyoverse's main drive. I think most people who are in denial saying like, oh, Dendro's not a power creep. Dendro's just Dendro. It's just a good element. But I beg to differ. I honestly think Dendro is designed to be a stronger version. I mean, nobody can sit here and tell me with a straight face that Superconduct can match Dendro. Nobody can sit here and say that Crystallize is on par with Hyper Bloom. It's, it's just a dumb argument to make. Now, if you're going to argue, is Vaporize on par with Hyper Bloom? Maybe in a best case scenario, but even the best Vaporize team we got right now can, I would say, match Hyper Bloom. For example, Tartaglia International, for example, Hu Tao Double Hydro. These are solid Vaporize compositions, but can you truly say they're better than the best Hyper Bloom team we have available right now? I don't think so. So at the end of the day, which one is more expensive to build? And I think that question is answered very easily as well. So then are we not correct in saying that Hyper Bloom can perform just as well as Vaporize, the best Vaporize, which Vaporize is considered one of the best reaction teams available right now with less investment? Right by by the by what we just said previous to this, does this statement not hold to be true? Then if th this statement is true, then by definition, Hyperbloom is better than Vaporize, which is already the best reaction or one of the best reactions and team comps we have available to the player base and also to most free to play players. Ride a national uh, or just general national team is one of the better teams that's available as well. Right and. Are you going to say that the national team is 100% definitively better than Hyper Bloom as well? I don't think you can make that statement either. I think they are pretty much on par with you. There's no currently any single reaction that can outperform Hyper Bloom hands down, right? And that's what I'm getting at. The fact that the Dendro reaction can be so potent, so powerful, and everybody is praising Hoyoverse. And remember, I'm not saying Power Creep is bad. Thank the Lord Hoyoverse found a creative way, a way that benefits the mass public to introduce some Power Creep into the game. I'm just presenting this to you guys saying, hey, right? don't think that Genshin has no Power Creep. But right now with Deha about to come up, everybody's saying, oh, Genshin has reverse Power Creep. Ha ha, so funny, right? Like, I get it, but... You can't ignore the fact that they've released Dendro and it just shot up immediately to one of the best elements in the game. I think Dendro right now is fighting for that first spot, but I think it's just a close second after Hydro when it comes to being the most powerful element. And that's saying a lot for something that has only been around for a couple of months and has yet to fully develop as an element with its burning and burgeon reaction. I've made videos talking about what I think that's going to lead into eventually and surprise, surprise, it is not simply just damage over time. I don't think burning was designed to function as a standalone reaction like Quicken. So stay tuned for more videos where I kind of dissect that as we get to test day here. That's why I think in a way I am excited for day has arrival. All in all, I think this power creep is great. It actually made the game so much more beginner friendly for all the people who were swarming in during the Sumeru era, for people who were not able to pull Nahida, don't sweat it. Like I said, Dendro is the most free to play element right now currently available to the player base. So any Dendro characters you have, there's going to be ways that you can pair them with another to make powerful synergies. And with that said, please comment down below, do you enjoy the Dendro power creep? Or do you feel like it came on a little too strong? And how do you think Hoyoverse is going to develop Burning and Burgeon? If you made it to the end of the video, make sure to comment Big Cloud. Till next time, urge y'all to stay safe, peace, peace, and bye.